applause. Hey Rajan, how are you doing? Awesome. Rajan is someone. Friday evening, 7:15. <laughs> Rajan is someone who can single-handedly lift the energy of any room, room, and I'm sure he's going to do the same here. We've had five, six very power-packed sessions, uh, Rajan, from policy to regulation um, to education, like we saw. Uh, and I'm going to ask you about. you know the vc perspective on starting scaling building a world class ai startup from india so my first question do you think there's a strong ai ecosystem in india on the face of it we are talent poor infra poor r&d poor does india have what it takes to build world class startups look short answer is absolutely yes um look globally it's very very early right uh in in sort of the ai evolution and i want us to go back 40 years okay mm -hmm. infosys was founded in 1983 40 years later two out of the top 5 it services companies globally are indian and five out of the top 10 are indian right so gen ai we are what 18 months in something like that maybe even less than 18 months in you know if you look at ai more broadly maybe we are a decade in google's an ai company tiktok's an ai company so i think we should look at this as a multi decadal view right take a multi decadal lens to what can india become what can indian companies in ai become and there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that 20 30 years from now we'll look and say to our the top 5 and five out of the top 10 by the way it doesn't matter you pick any industry it can be fintech it can be consumer brands varun is here on the next panel two out of the top five five out of the top 10 in everything will be in will be indian companies and you know why three things one talent by the way we don't have deep a large number of ai researchers in india hmm. but you take two teams sarvam which you all know which you're an investor which, yeah, in we were we were mm -hmm. fortunate to my partner harsh kohle our investment in uh, in sarvam you take another one that's in noida very few people know about it gan.ai ex facebook top ai researcher came back launch gan these this talent is world class you can they pit up you, you can put them up against anybody right so we do have talent now clearly on the research side we have a long way to go in terms of you know the sort of the yeah. deep ai researchers but if you look at application talent you look at the other sets of talent that you need to actually build ai companies right whether it's application companies tooling infra companies and so on and so forth so one is just talent we have talent right anybody who says india doesn't have talent on anything just hasn't sort of been here right <laughs> one we have talent i think second look we have the largest number of unsolved problems on planet earth there is no country on planet earth there is more unsolved problems and startups get built when you have big problems to solve okay ai is not about ai ai is about what problem can you solve using ai could be primarily ai or could be using also ai right i think the third is we have an economy that is now what 3 and a half trillion yeah that's going to be 10 trillion in a decade and by the time india turns 100 will certainly be closer to 20 trillion that's bigger than what china is today right and i think we are fortunate to be sort of a place in the world where we are racing towards a 10 trillion dollar economy what that means is we're going to have domestic opportunities but at the same time we are extremely well placed last year the global economy crossed 100 trillion dollars okay why is infos why is tcs traded at 150 billion market cap because it plays in a 100 trillion dollar economy not in a 3 and a half trillion dollar economy right so so look my view is firstly we should take a long view chandra and not just in ai in everything everything energy financial services consumer products retail you name it including ai and by the way we have we have examples of that i'll give you an example okay so today the most valuable fintech startup in the world probably is ant financial we don't know what it's worth given what's going on yeah. certainly is stripe i'll tell you something 15 years from now phone pay will be worth more than stripe you know why because phone pay's got 50% market share in the fastest growing payments market on the planet and it makes money many different ways 
So it's not just AI. So I just want to say that because I think I, sometimes I wonder like what are people talking about? Like we don't have a shot at when anybody says we don't have a shot at anything. I'm like you have a pain here. I'm sure Samir Nigam will be very happy with what you said, Rajan. I'll make sure he listens oh, to it. It's not just Samir Nigam. Like, wh why wouldn't Mama Earth be valued at several hundred billion dollars? They are already giving HUL and PNG a run for yeah, their money. So. That I don't know. Barun <laughs> next can talk about that. But, you know, why wouldn't... Look, let's, look at, let's look at Zometo and DoorDash, okay? Zometo is in an economy where GDP per capita is $3,500. Hmm. DoorDash is an economy with GDP per capita that is 25 times. Zomero market cap, $20 billion. DoorDash market cap, $42 billion. By 2030, which of these two companies do you think will be more valuable? There is absolutely no question. There is just no question. At $3,500 per capita, you have a company that is valued at $20 billion in an economy that is going to grow at 7 8%, which means, you know, every company in India, if you're well run, will grow at 15 20% for 30 years. Right. Um, you know, that's a very, very optimistic prediction, and I'm hope, hopefully it, it should play out. But coming back to AI Rajan, you know, one debate that we've had this evening, if you're looking to build an AI startup in India, what should it be? Should it be a foundational model, or is that too much capital, you know, too much capital that you have to invest? Should you instead look at applications on top of it? If you look at the way SoftBank is playing this, they're actually looking at the infra layer. They're looking at, you know, where they can invest in data centers, industrial robotics, and so on. What's your own vantage here? How should Indian startups play the AI game? And, you know, where will Peak look at it? You, foundational layer you've already looked at with Sarvam. Will, will you also invest in the infra layer, in the use case layer, existing startups who are using AI in a very smart way? What's your AI thesis going? Yeah, so look, I think Nandan either last week or a couple of weeks ago, right? He said, said India will be the use case capital yeah, of so, the world. So I think India's game really is in the application layer, right? And if you look at the application layer, there are many different applications, but we look at it, which is basically the use case. Uh, so I agree with Nandan, okay? Uh, there's no question we will be, because again, right, we have like the most yeah. number of use cases that need to get built. Uh, but it's not just for India. We will also build for the world, right? A lot of our startups are building for the world. If you look at use cases, applications, uh, Chandra, you have one layer of applications, which is consumer and prosumer. I don't know whether you know this. The fastest growing cons prosumer AI company in the world is in India. It's a company called InVideo. I don't know whether you know InVideo. Of course. They I added Invideo, 200 yeah. crores yeah. of software revenue in the last eight months. $25 million of new revenue from a new Gen AI product. And you know what they do? They, make, they, use they help make a videos. YouTube creator yeah, yeah. that would take four hours to make a video, now can make the same video in two minutes. It's a big bet on the creator ecosystem. No, and also, like, look, it's a 10x product. Okay? So we think that there's going to be a large number of companies that will get built that will leverage AI to build 10x better products for consumers and what we call prosumers, right? They're like YouTube creators. There are 50 million prosumers in the world. There are 4 billion consumers on the internet in the world, right? ChatGPT, you know, went as fast as 200 million. So that's one segment. We think the second segment that's really very interesting is building for SMBs, right? Freshworks got built yeah. initially by building software for small businesses because now with the cloud you could reach and the internet you could reach soft, you know, small businesses around the world. And leveraging India's cost structure, they built product that could, that could not be built if you're sitting in the U.S., right? Similarly, I think with AI, what you're going to see is SMBs will adopt AI fast. Some of the, we had 30 AI companies in the peak 15 portfolio, 3-0, okay? Large number of them are application companies. We have maybe a dozen or so tooling infra companies, and then we have a couple of foundation model companies. Um, it's the, some of our fastest growing companies in AI, right? these things go from zero to several million like that, okay? In, with SMBs, because they're building products that SMBs, they just make SMBs' lives much easier using AI, yeah. right? So that's the second type of company. The third type of company is you build enterprise solutions, but for different functional areas, right? The fastest adoption today in enterprise is in customer support. Okay, we have so many companies in our portfolio that have cut their customer support costs by 50% already. Hmm. By 50% already. They had 1,000 agents, today they have 500 agents. They had 200 agents, now they have 100 agents, right? So whether it's support, whether it's marketing, whether it's sales, so that's a third. And the fourth layer of applications, which we think are the most interesting, 
is vertical applications, vertical AI applications, okay? So I'll give you a couple of companies that we have. We have a company called Arintra. They focus on U.S. healthcare. U.S. healthcare spends tens of billions of dollars in something called medical coding. It was historically done manually. Now you can use AI, NLP and Gen AI, to basically automate almost all of it. There are four companies in the, in the U.S. that are willing to be the, market, the emerging, what we call emerging market leader in that space. In the contention is an Indian company. Two PhDs from India, went to the U.S., worked there, got their PhDs, came back, started a company, now they're building a global company, right? So vertical after vertical, we're seeing these companies emerge that are, and by the way, the reason these verticals are interesting is because they're very specific to that yeah. industry. You have a data mode. Distribution is difficult. You've got to solve things like, you know, selling to U.S. hospitals. You can't hallucinate, right? I mean... You can't have hallucination when you sell to a U.S. hospital, yeah. all right, especially if you're going clinical. So, so long answer to your question, we think in the on applications, right, there are at least these four, and then you can keep sub-segmenting. There's a large number of opportunities, and the opportunities are both for India, but also building for the world, right? A lot of the companies that I just mentioned are really building for the world. I'll, give you the, I'll end with the last one, which is not one of our companies, which is a company called Cropin. I don't know whether you guys know Cropin. Cropin is the agri. most advanced yeah. ag and food AI company on planet Earth today. Okay? If you're a farmer sitting in Kenya, some remote part of Kenya, and you're growing potatoes, Cropin can tell you what you should grow. Maybe you shouldn't grow potatoes. When you should start, it'll, tell, it'll predict when the disease is going to hit. Now, that's in Kenya. Guess what that can do for India? They also, have, they also do work in India. It's a startup from Bangalore, right? It's deep vertical AI, right? They have more data on agriculture, proprietary data collected over the last 10 years than any other agricultural company on planet Earth. It's remarkable. It's this company from Bangalore. So industry after industry, Chandra, we're going to see companies like this emerge that just have extraordinary amounts of data that deeply understand a vertical and they build products that make either the lives of consumers or businesses or farmers or doctors or patients better. Interesting. Rajan, you know, one trend that we've noticed is if you see Silicon Valley, some VCs are doing multi-hundred or billion dollar funding rounds in yet another LLM startup. Um, meanwhile, Sam Altman is said to be planning a seven trillion dollar fund for AI chip factories. Now, what do VCs in India think when they see such things happening uh, because, you know, you're competing for the same set of limited partners and family offices. Where does that leave you? Yeah, so firstly, you have to keep in mind, uh, Chandra, that limited partners are not looking to invest in AI. Limited partners are looking for returns, okay? <laughs> so they invest in venture funds or private equity funds or hedge funds, and they want significant returns. So the goal is to s deliver extraordinary returns to your limited partners. I just want to start with that because they don't care whether it's one trillion or seven trillion, okay? Now let's to get to your first part of your question, which is, look, today the primary focus, if you look at Bay Area AI, okay, is on one thing, eventual goal, AGI, yeah. okay? Artificial general Gen intelligence. The goal that we have, I think, as an ecosystem in India, I'm speaking for peak 15, but, you know, you speak to others, other investors, other startup founders. We have a different goal. We want to up-level humans. We don't want to build machines. Okay, there are two strategies you can take, okay? One, you say, I'm going to build a machine that is more intelligent or as intelligent as a human. The second, you say, there are 8 billion humans. I'm going to make, or we should make 8 billion humans, up-level them, so they have better lives. Right? In India, we have 1.4 billion. Hmm. We need to up-level 1.4 billion Indians. How do we make the lives of 1.4 billion Indians? By making education better, by making healthcare better, by giving them more energy, by improving our sanitation systems. One of the most interesting robotics companies in India is a company called Gen Robotics. Yeah. Okay? They Which build robots. Yeah. They're AI-based robots that, man that help clean manholes. Yeah. India has four million scavengers. They don't live beyond the age of 30. It's very sad. Up-level lives. So our goal is we're going to help humans. 
not build machines that are going to be as, and by the way, we will also leverage those machines as they get better, right? So, so I think the approach, and by the way, that's why I agree with Nandan, because if you take this lens around how do you build population scale solutions that just make 1.4 billion Indians live better, more successful, you think differently, right? So that's why applications make sense. And by the way, we leverage technology from whoever builds it, right? If the foundation models, we can use open source, we can use closed models, we will build our own models. By the way, you know, one part of the AI mission is to build India's foundation model. Hmm. Okay, so you're absolutely right. We can't spend seven trillion dollars, but the government has set aside 2,500 crores which, by the way, is quite a bit of money. Yeah. And you know that Aadhaar didn't take that much money. You know another thing? UPI didn't take that much money. So what you could potentially do with that is quite real, and that's coming. Right. I have one final question, Rajan. You know, a question that you asked Sam Altman sometime last year went viral on, in terms of what India should or should not do. Um, if you had to ask him another question this time around, or give him an answer on what India is doing, what, what, would, you, what would you say? Actually, you know, I, I don't know whether I would ask Sam Altman any more questions. <laughs> I'm much more interested in asking Nandan, how do we go 10x faster on making India the use, AI use case capital of the world, right? Because, look, again, look, I, I'm, I'm very simple. Okay, there are a whole bunch of things we need to do to take India from where we are to where we need to be. And like, we think AI can play a very, very important role. So I'm not answering your question directly, um, but actually I'm not that interested in... What else? <laughs> no, 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 I mean, look, OpenAI is a phenomenal company yeah. and they will have GPT-5 and GPT-6 and it'll be extraordinary. But I'd love to figure out how to make every farmer in India have 3x the yield so that they can live a better life. I'm much more interested in that. Um, one person who can help you with that is Tanuj. He co-authored a paper with Nandan on how India will perhaps become the biggest user of AI. In fact, Tanuj has a prediction that by Jan 2031, uh, India will, Jan 1st, 2031, India will become the biggest user of AI in the world. So we'll hold him to that. But final, final question, Rajan, give me three AI apps that you use every day. Yeah, I mean, look, I think every app that I'm using now actually has AI. I spent eight years at Google. Google's an AI company, <laughs> right? What did you make of their I.O. this week? Oh, I love it. Look, I think, I think, you know, this is a phenomenal company. Phenomenal company. I was there at eight, for eight years, I'd say. By the way, you should, we should never underestimate any company. Right. Okay? There's a reason these companies are the way they are, whether it's Google, whether it's Microsoft, whether it's Meta, uh, now whether it's OpenAI. Right? These are all phenomenal companies, so we shouldn't underestimate them. So, look, I think every, like YouTube that I use, the reason YouTube is what it is is because of AI. It's personalization. Right? So, at least my view is, I mean, every product that I use now has AI. I don't know of any product that I use that doesn't have AI. So I think that's the point, right? Like we think about AI as this shiny new thing. Well, the reality is firstly, it's been used in almost every product for a long period of time. And now it's just getting better. Great. On that note, thank you very much, Rajan, for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you, Rajan.